Aloha, and again, welcome this week to Condo Insider, Hawaii show about association living, mostly about condominiums, although we do talk occasionally about homeowner associations and other type of common interest uh, living. Anyway, one of the big topics in the last seven, 10 days, all over the news, everywhere we go, has been fire and life safety issues in condominiums. And certainly been a lot to report about that. So I thought it might be interesting over the next two or three weeks to talk about life safety and fire suppression systems and things you can do, what the law is and the requirements with regard to those items. Today I'm very blessed to have with us Amir Barchoff from Ohana Control Systems, whose company specializes in fire control systems in part. So welcome to the show, Amir. Thank you. And I'd like to just have you introduce yourself to our watchers and uh, Tell me a little bit about yourself. Well, I've uh, been in the business since 2002. Uh, actually, 2001 was when it all came to me, right after 9-11. I wanted to get into security, and we started Ohana Control Systems. It was actually originally Ohana International Enterprises, which was started in 1991. And we got into it from the access control, and then we got into the parking revenue control, and sure enough, it brought us into CCTV, and the big one was Fire Alarm, which we brought into the company in 2009, and that's when we renamed the company to Ohana Control Systems. So you're a broad-based company, besides just oh, the yeah. fire alarm systems, you have a lot of other types of products and services. So we are electrical contractors, we're also general contractors. Uh, we just were part of the big uh, renovation work at Miley Skycourt. We did everything from the ground all the way up to the 44th floor in the room renovations. Did the fire alarm system, we did everything in the building over there, basically. Well, you know, one of the things that has been brought to bear is, you know, there's been a major fire at a condominium here in Hawaii recently. And issue comes up about the fire alarm system and, and notifying people that there is an incident going on in a building. Correct. Tell us what the current code is for residential condominiums for a fire alarm system, the current code. I know we may have some older buildings that don't right. meet the current code, but kind of bring us up to date what the current code is. The current code, the big, the big one is requiring that people get notified and have at least a 75 decibel reading at pillow height with a speaker basically telling people to wake up or attention, attention, please, there's been a fire reported, please exit the building. And the back in the days, you would just have a bell or a horn in the hallway, in the common area hallway. Today, it has to be inside your unit and it has to be able to talk to you so you can get out. Also, the current code requires that there be smoke detectors in the common area hallways to get people to get out. And usually it's within about 40 feet between each um, smoke detector in an enclosed area. In an open area, it might be a heat detector. So in a two-bedroom apartment, for example, a condominium, they would need two? Basically, you would have to have at least 75 dBs at pillow in both bedrooms and 15 above ambient in the rest of the common areas of the, the apartment or the condo. So if the unit is, you close all your doors and we do a sound test and we don't get that 75 decibels at pillow, it becomes a requirement that we put the speaker inside. And it got even bigger this year where their requirement is the 100, 520 hertz requirement, which is low frequency. So people who are inebriated or old or little children who can't hear the typical speaker, with this 520 hertz, they'll be able to hear it. So kind of summarize what I hear you saying, correct me if I'm wrong, that you would have to have theoretically in a two bedroom apartment, two alarms, and it would have a speaker as mandatory. It would be two speakers um, inside the unit and in the outside, in the common area hallways, you would have speaker strobes and smoke detectors. Now, smoke alarms are a requirement by law for at the condo owners, generally it's a battery operated or it's, it's hardwired, but it doesn't notify downstairs, basically at the management office, that your smoke detector went off because you burnt a toast. But once the smoke billows out into the common area hallways, it'll let everybody know and it'll trigger the alarm to go off and the speakers will sound and say, attention, please evacuate the building. Now the attention, please, is that like a pre-recorded that a, the, the system does it or yes. it doesn't depend on someone being in no, the office? No, no, uh, there is a pre-recorded message. And generally what would happen is um, the manager or the security guard will say, sound saying this may have been an accident, a mistake 
disregard or they'll say please evacuate while the system is still ringing. So you're still going to have the whip in sound and you're going to have the attention please and usually it's in threes and then it keeps on telling people to evacuate. So if you were to retrofit an existing building, an older building, you're going to need to put these uh, speakers in each apartment. Correct. Maybe two if it's a two bedroom apartment. Correct. And then in the hallway, the common area, you're going to have a smoke alarm, you're going to have speaker, and a strobe light. You're going to have a speaker strobe and smoke detectors along the hallway as well, yes. And the speaker kind of is the enunciator for the alarm, like, right. the, you know, as we hear for uh, civil defense or something else. So Correct. it's kind of beep, 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 and right. attention, time to leave the building, or whatever it says, you know. Correct. You know, so that's what the current... Uh, requirements are. Correct. And even inside, the, during with the current requirement, even in your electrical rooms, in your storage areas, in your parking areas, you still got to have the same items, the speakers, the smoke detectors inside. Any place where people might be inside, you have to have some kind of notification. So it's, it's very critical that people understand that, you know, the code is the code, but the code is the evaluation of what is one life worth. Is it better to do it now and get it out of the way and or not do it at all? And, well, and it's required. Yeah, we're going to come back in a minute to like the older buildings, what they have now. But Correct. it seems to me when you have an alarm system like that, there's a lot more moving parts. Yes. It's got to be maintained, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Absolutely. How does that work? I mean, do you sign so contracts to maintain it or so are the requirements of how often you check it or how does that all work? So generally with uh, fire alarm systems, the state requires that you inspect it at least once a year and then you get it certified that it passed. Now, um, as far as the maintenance is concerned, it's definitely recommended because the longer, the better you maintain it, the longer the system will live. If you don't maintain it properly, you're, you're going to have a failing system. So that's big, the biggest hurdle that we deal with as far as our service is concerned is we're dealing with a lot of old systems and we're dealing with the code based on when the system was there and everybody is assuming that it's grandfathered in so we have to keep on maintaining it until they're ready to upgrade. And at that point, we will help them with the upgrade. Well, let's just say you're an older building you wanted to retrofit your fire alarm system. Kind of what are the steps you go through? You have, I guess it's a design, building permit, uh, installation, maybe inspection. What are, what are the steps you go through to put a new Generally, we, when most times the buildings will come to us and say, we're interested in upgrading our fire alarm, or our old fire alarm system is failing, it's going into alarm a lot, which we have that happen a lot. And then what we'll do is say, okay, fine, we'll give you an estimate. But what we normally do, as far as where Ohana is concerned, we'll go and do a pretest of our own and s figure out exactly how many speakers they need and what the building is going to need to pass the final acceptance with the fire department. So at that point, we'll submit them the pr proposal. They'll come back and say, okay, we chose you. There is five or six fire alarm companies in, in, in Honolulu or more maybe. And at that point, let's say they sign the contract, we will then go and submit it and give it to our engineers and have them design the fire alarm system. Usually it's by an electrical engineer. And then once that goes, then we submit it for permitting. Now we can submit it either through third party review or we'll go straight to the Department of Planning and Permitting and submit it. At that point, it goes to plan review and then it goes to the fire department for them to stamp it. Now keep in mind that the majority of the time they'll stamp it, but it still has to pass final acceptance. So if the engineer missed something in the design and they do the final acceptance, if something fails or something went missing, your contractor still has to come in and make it right. And it, it's happened to us a few times. So in general, at that point, once we get the permit, we will start the installation. Our recommendation for older buildings is keep the old system running while we're putting in the new system. So we're going to run all new wiring, all new electrical. Everything goes from zero. We don't like to use anything of the existing. We try to stay away from that. So in essence, once you start installation, they really have the old system functioning until Correct. the new system. And then as a part of your contract, you take out the yes. old system and the old boxes. And once, once we get final approval from the fire marshal and he says everything went great, we come back and demo the old system and do whatever needs to be done to give them exactly what, they, what we promised them. So in essence, that's what I understand on the, on the building code, that if in fact you started to retrofit, 
you know, you have to meet the new building code. Correct. And if you meet the new building code, that means you're going to have these speakers in the apartments. Absolutely. Do you, get, do you get pushback from owners saying, I don't want a speaker in my apartment? <laughs> Every single time. There hasn't been a time where we haven't had an owner, after we did the installation, rip the speaker off. And because when we're doing testing, it's loud and it has to be loud, but they'll take it off, they'll cut off the wire, they'll do whatever, and they say, we didn't do anything. But what they don't realize with the new systems, we know exactly which unit number did what it did because we can trace the wire where it went to. So a lot of people feel like, why do we have to do this? My building is, is grandfathered in, or I don't need to hear this, or I don't want that speaker right here because it's ugly to my unit. And a lot of people don't realize that it's not us or even the, the property management company, or even your resident manager that's doing this. It's code requirement, and it's for your life. And we try to keep on reiterating it. What is one life worth? You may not know the answer to this. What do the boards do when they have that owner who cuts off the wires and says, I don't want it? But they eventually, I guess they turn it over to their lawyer, write them letters or whatever. Basically, but. I mean, it, 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 I just went through a board meeting last week and I had people yelling, well, you're not running conduit in my unit and you're not doing this. But part of our job, as far as the contractor is concerned, is to try to appease them and make them feel as comfortable as they can so we're not, um, you know, dealing with ugly aesthetics in their units. So I'm assuming if you're running some new wires, it's not big wiring. No. You're using some kind of soffit or cover or something. Well, kind generally, of we try to come in from the common area hallway and we try to just, um, drill into the build into the unit and just mount a speaker right there if we can if we can't we'll put it in a wire mold we'll put it somewhere where we can hide the wire either in the soffit or inside the walls if it's possible one of the projects we just completed um we you won't even see one conduit because everything was run inside the walls you know when we are able to do that we will you know in other installations from other manufacturers or other customers i mean other um, dealers in this town they just run this ugly silver pipe down their hallways and all they do is paint it and yeah, it is a big eyesore. Yeah, well, I think that's probably one of the issues of cost, whether you want it to look nice or you don't want it to look yeah. nice. But is it fair to say in, in summary, you have speakers in the units, yes. they will maintain their own battery operated smoke alarm in the units yeah. and the common areas will have the speaker, the strobe light. And, a and, smoke detector. and the smoke detector. And if it's in a not sprinkled building, you got to have a pull station by every staircase, uh, uh, emergency pull station, where you're pulling the pull station to, to activate the fire alarm. If it's sprinkler, you don't have to have And if it's sprinkler, the new law says that you can, as long as it's 24 hour security and they can pull the pull station, you only need one pull station. I got it. But if it's not 24 hour security, you need pull station um, on every floor by every exit. This is quite interesting, but we're going to take a one minute break and come back and talk a little bit about some of the older buildings. Sure. So we'll be right back in a minute. Sister Power. I'm your host, Sharon Thomas Yarbrough, where we motivate, educate, empower, and inspire all women. We are live here every other Thursday at 4 p.m., and we welcome you to join us here at Sister Power. Aloha and thank you. Welcome back to Condo Insider. We're here with my friend Amir Borchoff from Ohana Control Systems talking about the fire code and fire alarm systems. And we'll talk about more about fire protection in a moment, but I guess, you know, you talked about the fire code. You gave us, I'm going to call it the short version of it. Very short version. Yeah. How big is the fire code? The fire code consists of maybe about 10,000 pages. They relate to every, from the building code, one book re refers to the building code, which refers to the NFPA 72, which then refers to the NFPA, NFP 1, 
2012 right now, up until last year where they were in the 2006 version. So it keeps on growing. There's about 10,000 pages to read through, um, some pertaining to commercial buildings, to low rise, to high rise, to uh, hotels. Everybody has their own um, requirements. But well, you know, one of the things we were saying, we kind of got into you go out and design and you got to uh, get a bid and approval and then you go and they submit for a building permit and it goes to the various departments, including the fire department and comes back where you get approval for installation. About how long does it take to go through the design, the building permit, and installation of, let's say, an average 150 unit building? So, my experience has gone from a three week turnaround to a nine month turnaround. So, is that for the, is that for the permit or is for that the permit? To okay. receive the permit, not from design, just once we submit for permit, it's taken as long as nine months. And it all depends on the luck of the draw of who receives it. Now, currently, um, there's, I think, five guys at HFD plans, at the planning department from the fire, um, from Honolulu Fire Department. There's five guys reviewing, and they're reviewing hundreds of permits. Now, keep in mind, that's, we're just talking about completely renovations, but imagine uh, a store in Ala Moana Center they have to have their fire alarm system also inspected. So these guys, there's five guys reviewing hundreds of permits. So it's the luck of the draw. Sometimes we push, 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 and we beg, plead, and do whatever we need to do to get them to give us the permit. Sometimes it takes longer. Today and nowadays, the good news is there's third-party reviewers. So you go to a company such as Palicana Permits, and they'll run the whole um, permit for you. And that might be a little bit quicker, maybe two months. You know, if you go do it on your own, it might take a lot longer. I used to do it on ourselves, but nowadays we use a third-party review because it cuts the amount of hours that we have to spend on getting it. But the key is, and, and I always re recommend this to all the condos, it's better to do a design build where the contractor will guarantee that it will be approved and passed by the fire marshal than going and hiring, no disrespect to any of the great designers out there, a, um, uh, what do you call it, a consultant. Because if the consultant forgets something, then you're looking at change orders. And that's something nobody likes. We know the paper has been talking a lot about one and focus on sprinkler systems. I don't want to talk about sprinkler systems today, but they keep referring, to, and I'm not saying this is accurate, but they're saying the buildings built before 1975 did not have to have sprinkler systems. But that changed, let's just say that's accurate. I don't think it yeah. is accurate, but let's just say it is accurate. The code with respect to fire alarm systems may un be on different dates. So you may have an older building that's after 1975, that your fire alarm system's out of date and doesn't meet the building code. Definitely. Almost all the buildings that have had a fire alarm system prior to 97 are not in today's code. Some of the newer buildings, even buildings in 2006 are not, that have been built in, through 2006 are not in today's building code. But again, they're all grandfathered in. A lot of the condos, they never set money aside or enough money aside for brand new fire alarm systems. So. You know, most people, they're older, they're living on fixed income, they're looking at a, at a huge expense, 300, 400,000, and there's not enough money in reserves. What do they do at that point? So, I know it's exactly, it's not, it's not possible for you to tell me what it would cost, but I'm just gonna give you a hypothetical that maybe our viewers can kind of relate. If you take a building, 150 units, average issues you have to deal with to retrofit the fire sprinkler alarm system, what kind of range of cost do you think it would be? So we've gone, we've done buildings um, with 150 units that were as low as 130,000 because they're all studios. And we've gone as, as high as 256. Um, depending if it's two bedrooms, you're looking at roughly at 3,000 per unit uh, for a two bedroom unit. If it's a one bedroom, it might only be 1,700, depending on what obstacles we're dealing with when we're seeing the building. So it's, it ranges. So from the way I hear you talk about it, it's, it's like 1000 to $3,000 a unit, depending on how many bedrooms. Correct. Recognizing the basic configuration of the building and where you have to run the wires can have an impact on it. Yes. But it's not really 
huge amounts of money when you consider the, you know, the value of one person's life. Absolutely. I always say one thing. Sprinklers save buildings. Smoke detectors save lives. And, and the reason behind it is if the smo a smoke detector goes off, you have enough time. And you have a speaker, you have enough time to escape the building and run away. Where you have a sprinkler system, even though the fire went, it's got to be hot enough to reach the sprinkler head, which will generate the water to flow. By that time, the smoke is already billowing out into the hallways. And what we want is we want people to get out. We want people to be out of the building. So speakers, smoke detectors, it's critical, in my opinion. It's the most important thing for any unit, for any building, whether it's an open air or enclosed type of situation. Well, certainly everybody here and everybody out there believes in public safety. We want to find Definitely. ways to protect the people in the building and recognizing you take these older buildings with uh, uh, sprinkler systems. The older ones, the really old ones, prior to 1975 in, the, in Hawaii, they say, did not have to have a sprinkler system. That's true. Are there solutions other than sprinklers to have fire? Uh, yeah, there is a, a product called Extinguish which is an aerosol type of product. It's a green product. It's not, it's human friendly, meaning it's not going to kill you. It's not, usually they put it in data centers because they don't want the electronics to get all destroyed with water. Um, it's a very inexpensive solution. It still needs to be run by, you still got to run power to it, but it will be triggered the same exact way of a uh, sprinkler head would trigger. It would st still trigger the same way, except it doesn't cost as much. You don't have to run piping all over the, the, um, into the units and so on and so forth. But basically, it's not something that's currently being used in lieu of sprinkler systems. It's generally being used in, for data centers, areas where people are not in there. And, and hypothetically, we all know what the cost of sprinklers are. We've heard um, all sorts of numbers from different people in the press, which frankly, I think are extremely low. I would remind everybody that our governor thought that it would take $10,000 a classroom to air conditioning the schools. And I think the bills came in at 50 or 60,000. And you start looking at other issues like asbestos and lead paint. Yep. No one really knows. We can all hypothesize it. But just taking hypothetically this other system, about what, about how would the cost compare to that of a sprinkler if, system? If, if uh, a sprinkler system cost 100, this would cost about $30. You know, so, so it's about 70% um, less. Yeah. But again, it's not the, the solution. And, and, you know, I mean, it, it is there. It's available. Um, I would personally more recommend going the right way and putting in the sprinkler systems. But I would tell all the buildings right now, old, put in the brand new fire alarm system. I think that's more critical than anything else because a lot of the buildings out there today, their, their systems are antiquated. They don't have parts to repair them. And when they keep on sweeping it under the rug and thinking it's, you know, you're going to have a situation like what happened a couple of weeks ago where people actually died. And, and that, that was really sad. And this other system, which we know isn't as good as, well, I don't want to say it's not as good as sprinklers, but is different than sprinklers in its configuration. Does that meet the building code? It does. I got to look into that. I, you know, it's, it's a new product. It's been right. around, but it's not been used in lieu of sprinkler systems. They've used it, yes, it, it is allowed in buildings, but they've mostly used it inside data centers. And how does it work? So it's, it's a potassium-based product, and what it does is potassium likes, likes fire, and it, it kills the fire right away. Where oxygen makes fire blow out more, potassium will kill it. So it's, it's, it's an aerosol. So it sprays out. It's like a dark cloud. And within seconds, the fire is out. Well, it's probably worth investigation anyway. Sure. because We have some videos. I'll make sure you, I'll send it to you. That'd be wonderful. Because one of the things, you know, we, we, we talk about fire safety systems is um, in older buildings, they're going to have to look at it because Absolutely. we don't want anyone to be hurt. But there are issues that relate to that on... Uh, cost and and you know I always was quoted as saying you know, it's not cost per se it's all the things you have to deal with to put it in create the cost absolutely you know and there's a whole lot of hidden condition type issues that that can really run this number up and then you get into affordability yep and 
uh, and where are you going to get the money, you know? And uh, uh, I did a small calculation, and because uh, they say there's 360 buildings that have this problem, and depending on how old and all these hidden condition issues, it could be close to a billion dollars to do, oh, 300, easy. There to is, do 360 buildings. There is about 1,100 buildings that need to retrofit or upgrade their systems. They're saying 360, it's probably true, but there's a lot more than that. So we're talking about two to three billion, maybe five billion, you know, from yeah. my calculations. Yeah, that's if you include the fire alarm if systems. If you're doing the fire right. alarm systems and the sprinkler systems. And then yes. you throw on the cast iron pipes, the wastewater pipes for these old buildings. And, you gotta, and, and then you gotta do the electrical systems too, because some of them can't, yeah. you know, a lot of buildings, the electrical is antiquated. You can't get parts for that too. So it's, it's. So, what's your recommendation to board members about fire alarm systems? I would definitely, if your building is old, I would definitely look into upgrading. I would definitely do it right now because the labor costs are not coming any lower than where they're at right now and they keep on going up. And the advantage of doing it now is if something new comes up or a new requirement code comes up, you're buying yourself more time to put the money away for it. And, and that's the advantage of doing it right now. Right now means go into design, go into planning, get the contractors out there, not just, I mean, hopefully it's Ohana Control Systems, but anybody else, and put it out there so at least you guys are ready because the, the intent is life safety. And that's the way I look at it. It's always been life safety. Well, your company and other companies have a great reputation at this and have the experience. And I know you would welcome people asking for more information. Absolutely. But I want to thank you for being on the show today. Thank you very, it's very, very much. It's very insightful. The next couple of weeks, we're going to be talking more in detail about sprinklers and, and insurance and all the things that are related to safety of the residents in a building. And we thank you very much for watching Condo Insider. We're on every Thursday from 3 to 3.30, and we hope you'll come back and visit us next week. Aloha.